Um, so up, up next, we have a talk on sparse IR, composable abstractions for sparse compilation in deep learning. And with us, we have Zhao Yi and Ru Heng Lai. Yeah. Zhao is a second year PhD student at the University of Washington's Paul G. Allen School of Computer Science and Engineering, advised by our own Luis Seze in Sample Research Group. His research interests includes programming language and architectures for sparsity in deep learning. We also have Ru Heng Lai, and Ru Heng is a first year PhD student at the Catalyst Group of Carnegie Mellon University, advised by Tian Chi Chen. His research interests lie in the intersection of computer systems and machine learning, especially the systems for emerging machine learning workloads. And with that, I'll pass it to you, Ruhang. Thank you for the introduction and hello for everyone. I'm Ray Hong, a first year PhD student at Carnegie Mellon. Today, together with Zhao, we are very happy to introduce Sparse TIR which is a composable abstraction for sparse compilation in deep learning here at TVMCOM. And this work is collaborated by the University of Washington, Carnegie Mellon University, and OctoML. So sparsity is becoming ubiquitous in deep learning workloads, such as the graph neural networks, ragged tensors, sparse transformers, and so on and so forth. And there has been an increasing demand of high performance sparse operators, notably, SPMM or SDDMM and some block sparse operators. Though there have been already significant amount of jobs done to accelerate the normal deep learning workloads, the tool chains for sparse deep learning is still primitive and hard to generalize. And here are some existing solutions for sparse deep learning. The first one is sparse libraries. We know that some hardware vendors such as NVIDIA and Intel have released their libraries for sparse algebra. These libraries usually provide dozens of frequently used APIs, but they fail to cover the emerging workloads such as the graph neural networks on heterogeneous or hypergraphs, because these workloads cannot be expressed as two-dimensional sparse operations in a simple way. And for another thing, the library's approach is not scalable enough because you can imagine that the possible combinations of sparse operators is exponential. So this motivates us to find a solution from the compilers. Sparse tensor compilers such as MT1 and Tackle decouple the sparse tensor format description and the kernel description. For the format, the compilers provide a set of format annotations to indicate the sparsity attribute of each dimension of the tensor. And for the computation, people can describe the computation in a format agnostic way, just like describing the dense tensor computation. And Tackle also supports schedules to describe the code optimizations, such as tiling, fusion, and etc. These compilers can cover the set of operators required by sparse deep learning, but However, we argue that such a design cannot give us the best performance on heterogeneous hardware. So what is the reason here, right? From the operator side, the sparse operators are hard to optimize on the modern parallel architectures because the natural irregularity of sparse computation makes it very hard to fit the computation into the acceleration units such as the tensor course in GPUs and the matrix multipl multiplication units in TPUs. And from the compiler side, the traditional sparse tensor compilers can generate load imbalanced kernel code sometimes because they only support specifying a single format for each sparse matrix. And this introduces our solution of composability. So we introduce two forms of composability the composable formats and the composable transformations. The composable format means using multiple formats instead of a single one to describe a computation. So different parts of a sparse matrix are stored in different formats, and this can re reduce fragmentations and paddings while maximizing the hardware utilizations. 
However, the straightforward way of implementing the composable formats, like bringing the composable formats as first class, first class constructs of the IR, will greatly increase the overall design complexity, and therefore we switch to another angle to decompose the computations. For example, you can see here, a times x can be decomposed into a1 times x plus a2 times x, where a1 and a2 are stored in two different formats. And in this way, we no longer need to support the composable formats as a first class basic construct of the IR. So regarding the composable transformations, we'll design a multi-stage compiler infrastructure that gradually lowers and transforms the front-end program to TensorIR in TBM. And such a design enables us to combine sparse structural layer transformations at the high-level IR and perform hardware-related transformations at the low-level IR. And we can then better utilize the hardware acceleration unit. So the overall idea here is that we can choose format decompositions and transformations at different stages. And this gives us a search space and we can then find the pair of choice with the best performance from the search space. And here is our programming interface. Similar to Tackle, we provide an interface that separates the data structure and the computation. And the three key new constructs here are the axis, sparse buffer, and sparse iterations. The axes are like some primitive sparse format annotation, and we can use the axis to describe the sparse tensors and sparse iterations. We extend the idea of level formats of Tackle. Tackle only annotates each dimension with the sparse dense attribute, indicating whether a dimension has dense or compressed storage. And we step forward to provide another set of attributes that is called fixed and variable to indicate that if a dimension has fixed or variable number of non-zero elements. And for each kind of axis, we store the necessary auxiliary data such as the index pointer and the indices here. And sparse axes are powerful and can express various sparse formats. For example, to represent ragged tensors, we can represent the ragged tensors as a dense fixed, dense fixed axis i followed by a dense variable axis j. And for the ELL pack format that restricts the number of non-zero elements on each row, we can describe that format by a dense fixed axis i followed by a then followed by a sparse fixed axis j. And sparse buffer, just as its name suggests, is our data structure for sparse tensors. And the storage of the sparse buffers are shown on the right. And you can see that we store the buffer value independently from the axis and the auxiliary data of the axis. And the sparse iteration describes the computation of an operator. It contains the iteration space represented by an array of axes and contains the computation body. On describing the computation, Tackle only accepts iteration variable as indices, but in sparse TRR here, we support complicated indices. For example, both affine indices and non-affine indices. And this can help us to enhance the capabilities of sparse TRR and allows us to allows more complicated operations such as, for example, sparse convolution. And next, let's welcome Zhao to introduce the next part of this talk. Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao. And Rehan has just summarized the programming interface of our front-end IR. We called IR in this stage as our stage one IR. Now let's see how to progressively lowering such program and how to use composability. We have a compiler class called the format decomposition, in which you provide the composable formats as an array of format descriptions. And this path would rewrite the original program to, uh, to several sparse iterations uh, each one operates on one of the formats. This is how we leverage composable formats in sparse here. 
Besides the decomposed format, we also provide other scheduled primitives in stage one, including those reordering iterators in sparse iterations and primitive to few sparse iterators, which converts two dependent operators into a single one. Stage one transformations do not change the stage of the IR and only mani manipulate the three sparse TIR structures, the sparse buffer, sparse axis, and sparse iterations. After transforming the stage one code, we lower the program to stage two. We firstly restructure sparse iterations to nested loops. We emit a fixed length loop for fixed axis and dependent loops with variable extents for variable axis. Then we transform the buffer access from coordinate space to position space. By this, we mean that we convert the logical, we convert the logical coordinate to their, to their physical position in compressed layout of sparse matrix. The stage two IR is very similar to TVM's tensor IR. Uh, the only addition is that we have sparse buffers and sparse axis in this stage. And this is what tensor IR do not have for now. Um, uh, the, uh, the stage two IR is composed of loops and blocks, and we can reuse the schedule primitives in TVM to schedule the sparse TIR as well. Note that stage two schedules do not change the stages as well, like stage one schedules. They only manipulate the blocks and loop structures. The last step is to lower the stage two IR to stage three IR. Stage three is pure tensor IR, pure tensor IR without any sparse structure. We will remove sparse axis and sparse buffers during the lowering process. Buffer access to sparse buffers are transformed to buffer access to their underlying one-dimensional flattened storage. After, after we obtain tensor IR, the remaining job is left to TVM stack. TVM would take over and generate code on different backends. For GPU backend, we add a horizontal fusion path to TVM because composable formats would incur a bunch of CUDA kernels, one for each format, which would introduce extra kernel launching overhead. And we implement a technique called the horizontal fusion as a post-processing path in TVM. This path would stack different kernels into a single one and translate global block index to local block index for each of the kernel. In this way, we map computations for different submetrics in the composable format to different stream multiprocessors in GPU. Now let's look at it, some evaluations. The SPMM is a generic operator using sparse deep learning, which multiples the sparse matrix with the dense matrix. The output matrix is also dense. Previous work have summarized the key to SPMM performance. The first one is load balancing because the number of, no row, uh, number of elements per row might not be the same. The other one is memory access. We want to make sure that memory access to global memory is coalesced and we want to have better cache locality. We designed a composable format, HYB, to serve such purpose. We first partition the sparse matrix by columns, and the number of columns is specified with the parameter C. We then collect non-zero rows of each partition into buckets, each one with size of power of two. If one row has number of elements, not power of two, we just do some padding. Now each bucket would, be, would form an ER pack format. The parameter K says the upper bound of number of buckets per, per partition. For rows with length greater than two to the case, we will split them into segments, each one with length two to the case. The design goal of HYB is twofold. Firstly, we want to have compile time load balance. This can be achieved by letting each thread block process a fixed number of elements, which is easy to do for ER pack matrix in composable format and we use some schedule primitives to achieve this. The other goal is better cache locality, and that is why we partition the column. We make sure that elements access for each of the partition do not exceed the capacity of L2 cache in GPUs. Now here's the results. We compile sparse tier generated kernels with popular sparse libraries and existing sparse compilers. We outperform libraries in almost all settings because of the compile time load balancing and cache locality. The Tackle compiler also exploits compile time load balancing, but they do not leverage composable formats that cannot use register to perform local aggregation and harm their performance. 
by comparing sparse here generated kernels with, with and without composite performance, we see that load balancing really matters, especially for power load distribution graphs such as OGBM archive, where we have four times speed up. Actually, SPMM is well studied workload. And let's see another one, which is more exciting and sparse here can really help. Relational gather metamorph scatter, we call it RGMS for short. It is a frequently used operator in sparse deep learning workload, including sparse convolutions, mixture of experts, and a relational GCM. The computation of our GMS can be summarized as a formula shown here. For each relation, we have a unique sparse matrix A, a unique dense weight matrix W, and a feature matrix X is shared for all relations. Then we compute A times X times W for each relation and take their summation as final results. And that's the computation of RGMS. Previous works such as GM frameworks compute RGMS as two phase reduction. They use create a temporary buffer T to store X times W for all relations. And they compute A times T and aggregate by relations. Such schedule is not IO efficient because T might be large and will incur high GPU memory consumption. Besides, T is stored in global memory. Such two-stage manner would increase IO overhead because we need to access T in both spaces. With the help of sparse TIR, we design a schedule that stores T in shared memory of GPUs. In this way, we, out, we perform most gather metamorph schedule locally and only access global memory to fetch AX and when write to Y. For local metamorph, we use NVIDIA tensor cores with TUM's tensorized primitive. For load balancing, we generalize the HYB format mentioned before to HYB3D for better load balance. For our GCN workload, compared to existing work frameworks, we, we achieved 4 to 40 times speed up because of less I.O. access. We also consume much smaller GPU memory, and this would help researchers run in large, large, larger model, models. By comparing sparse tiers performance in different settings, we observe that both composable format and composable transformations matter. The hybrid format helps alleviate the load imbalance, and the composable transformations enable us to use tensor cores, which also greatly accelerate the kernel. Besides two, the two workloads, we also write other sparse operators and optimize them with sparse tier. Please check out our repository on GitHub. And this research was summarized in a paper that was accepted by S plus and we have been artifact evaluated. Please check the artifact repository if you, are in, if you are interested in the benchmark. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Zhao and Ruhang. Um, thanks for sharing your work on, on this. It's exciting to see uh, this support, especially as it allows us to keep pace with format and hardware advancements. Um, I think while we wait for people to post questions, I did have one. Like, what, what is kind of next for Sparse IR? Uh, Rehan and I are pushing the relax level integration of Sparse IR, where we extend the annotations at computational graph level. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so if you have additional questions, please go ahead and post them in Q&A, and um, we can always come back and answer them later. Thanks again very much. Um, okay, so up next, oh wait, oh, we do have a question. Great. Um, so how much runtime is improved using sparse IR, sparse TIR? It depends on workloads. I mean, for workloads of like RGCN, we can greatly improve the overall inference time for RGCN. We have shown that we can get 40 to 40 times, but for some workloads such as the SPMM, uh, we our speed up is around one to three, one to three times because uh, SPMM is a well studied workload. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you.